everyone, Glitch here, and welcome back to Hack 5. So, this is a bit of a different video. As you can see, I'm in the middle of actually filming another video, the previous, uh, you know, magnetic war drive-in video or whatever. And I think I just did my pineapple in, because while the lights are on and something's definitely going on inside, I don't have any USB functionality, nor do I have anything more than the, just the management interface. Which tells me that I might have uh, toasted the USB hub, the built-in USB hub inside the pineapple. Now, how did I do that? Well, with another USB hub. Uh, I believe this got loose inside the uh, war driving case and bounced around and ended up shorting out on something, causing the USB hub to short out. Now, I kind of thought that's where this video was going to end, um, but I just had an exceptionally stupid idea. And I figured I'd bring you guys along for the ride, and let's see how this works out. First, let's get let's rewind and uh, well, let me tell you how I got to this point. This is going to now be a troubleshooting video and a potentially repair video. Uh, I thought I would walk you guys through my process of how I do some of these things. I get a lot of questions on, oh, how did you make that logical jump, or how did you figure that out? Uh, this is the mind of glitch, so let's give this a go. So, like I said, I'm sitting here working on the pineapple, and I go to move the case to get a shot or whatever it was I was doing, and I smell a little bit of smoke, and the pineapple goes off, and that's that. You know, I'm thinking, okay, crap, I killed the pineapple. So I unplugged the USB hub, which had the 5 gigahertz and the GPS plugged into it, and the pineapple comes back to life. So that tells me it's not completely dead. Well, digging a little further, uh, I plug just the GPS in. It doesn't come up in the LSUSB. And I also do an IF config to see what uh, Wi-Fi interfaces are there. And I've only got the management interface. That tells me the system on chip is alive, but none of the peripherals. Because on this board, on the Mark 7, two of the Wi-Fi interfaces go through a USB hub chip. It's basically this, just on a PCB without connectors. The Wi-Fi cards are effectively directly wired to it. So I take it one step further, and I get my voltmeter out, and I see if I've got power on the USB hub. And I do. That tells me I didn't just fry the uh, USB port's, you know, voltage regulator or, you know, power circuit, but I actually ended up killing the USB hub chip. It's still getting power, it just don't worky. So you look real close at it, and it says FE 1.1 blah 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 part number on it. Well, I'm thinking, okay, I could go over to Amazon real quick and buy an FE, you know, some, some USB hub chips, but they won't be here for a week. So I look at my little culprit here, and uh, what do I see on the back? An FE 1.1S um, USB hub chip, which happens to be the same one the pineapple uses. That wasn't intentional. I actually just stumbled upon this. And so I'm wondering, do I get to teach you guys how to desolder today? Let's give it a shot. I mean, it's already broken. I can't make it worse. Okay, so like I said, the troubleshooting steps were, you know, there's nothing coming through the USB, and I'm pretty sure the Wi-Fi cards are fine. It's just this USB hub chip in the middle is dead. And one quick way I can confirm that I didn't just fry the power circuit, which was my first thought, is to go ahead and let's plug the pineapple in here. And it doesn't even need to be fully booted for this, but I can put my test leads here and here. And I'm getting 5 volts, uh, negative 5, because I have these leads switched around. But that tells me that I didn't fry the power circuitry. So, what are the odds that I can desolder this chip which is the same as this chip, and fix my pineapple. So I think first things first, I'm going to practice on the USB hub because these are like six bucks. It's actually cheaper to get one of these than the 10 pack of USB hub chips. Not that I would go out of my way to buy one of these to repair a pineapple, but that is a possibility. So the trick on a package like this, without a... Uh, hot air station is going to be just keeping enough thermal mass in the part that all the legs can be lifted without, you know, tearing traces or anything. Now, I wouldn't be super worried if I tore a trace on this board because this is sacrificial, but on the pineapple, we definitely don't want to do that. So this is good practice to get it right. 
I mean, these are the worst tweezers, but uh, we're basically just going to drag our soldering iron along here and try to warm up all the traces at once. I have to do it kind of awkwardly through here too. And it may actually be better to try and lift it just with very little pressure. Like I said, we don't want to tear anything. We also don't want to overheat the chip in the middle, so we have to be quick. And then we may actually add some of our own leaded solder for a little more thermal mass and also to kind of lower the melting point and keep it liquid longer. There she comes. Don't bend any of those pins. And there it is. There's the piece. Now we just need to do it on the pineapple. You can see it had a bunch of flux under it. And we have a bunch of solder on the uh, legs, but that's fine. We can reflow that and pull any excess off later. Now the thing we want to watch out for is make sure it's in the proper orientation. If you look very closely, I can't stop shaking here, this is a really tiny part. You can still see the text on the front, and we want to make sure the text on the front goes the same way on the other part. So I'm going to set this right here, and we can see that the text is upright. So, and the dot, the locating dot is in the bottom left. That's the ideal way to identify it, but this one... The dot isn't visible through all the flux. Oh, wait. Yep, there it is. So it needs to go back on that way. Smartphone camera does not like working in macro. And here we go again, but this time with a lot more other components. We don't want to hit any of these crystals, any of these passives, the resistors, the capacitors. We've got to be super careful of all of that. Again, I'm going to use my trick of adding a bunch of solder as this will build up thermal mass. It seems counterproductive, but this will build up thermal mass and hold the heat in longer. Doesn't mean we'll have a little bit of cleanup to do after, but that's fine. Okay, I had to cut there because I it was taking too long and I needed to just focus on that. So now, as you can see, I've made a bit of a mess of the board, but I don't think I ripped any traces. That's all just melty flux. So I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol and Q-tips and do my best to clean this flux up. Went a little heavy on the sauce there. Actually, what I think that is, and part of the reason I had such a hard time getting the old chip off, I think that is glue that the company, the factory that put these together used to hold the chip in place so it didn't come loose while it was on the assembly line. Some of these smaller pieces get held in just by surface tension, but these bigger pieces, especially if they're doing reflow on the back, they'll glue those in place so that they can go through the process without falling off. I'm almost certain that's what that is. And unfortunately, that means it's going to be a heat set glue. And it's not going to want to come out too easily. So I'm going to have to just work around it. And it's going to be ugly. But it will not, uh, it won't be conductive. It's going to be specially designed to not be conductive. Now I just need to clean up the pins on my spare USB hub chip. Which I don't know that you're going to be able to see too well. Because this is a phone and it won't macro shot too well. So basically I'm just going to go through here and drag all this solder off. Okay, now it's really difficult to see, but the pinhole is in the bottom left, in the bottom left as we discussed. And I'm actually going to switch my soldering iron tip out for my much, much smaller one. And now the very tedious process of putting all these pins back in place can begin. I'm going to anchor it with just one, and then I'll draw the solder out for the others. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna cut here so that I can actually get real close to this board and make sure I'm not shorting any pens out. Back in a moment. Okay, so like I said, it's not at all pretty because of the terrible amounts of glue used to secure the components in place at the factory. But as far as I can tell, there's no shorts. So here goes nothing. Okay, we get the blinking blue light. We got that before. So now we need to sit here and wait for it to boot up. And while that happens, I'm gonna to switch to the computer so that I can show you whether or not we get our Wi-Fi interfaces back. And now we can sit here and refresh the dashboard. We're connected to it, we're logged in. So we haven't made anything worse. So if I open up a terminal here and type LSUSB, hopefully I should see more than just the basic host of Yes! Look at that. We got both of the Wi-Fi cards back. So if I do IF config, we get WLAN 1, WLAN 2, WLAN 1's in monitor mode, that's to be expected. Now if I plug in the U or the uh, GPS dongle here and do an LS USB, I should see Ublocks GPS. Yes, there it is. We just fixed a pineapple with a $6 USB hub and now I can go back to making the video that I started three hours ago. Um, that's a bit how, uh, I guess that's a bit of an insight into how I go about diagnosing and repairing a very broken pineapple. It, it is now uglier, but it is fully functional. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed this impromptu video and an insight into the way Glitch's mind works and figures out a problem and solves it. I could have very easily just went and got another pineapple, waited a week or whatever, uh, and... But instead, I don't need to. I now have this uh, very unique pineapple. And uh, yeah, so thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll be back to the regular scheduled content. Next week, we're going to be working on uh, Pineapple C2 over LTE. So be looking forward to that. Thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. This is Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.